time to tantalize your earbuds with creative makers and shakers. It's Creative Living, the podcast with Jane Klaus. Welcome to Creative Living, where we help you live your most creative life. I'm Jane Klaus. I'm so happy you're joining us today. Now, it's very important to have the right tools to get the job done. And I am a big believer in making sure that you always have the right tools. I know you know that my sewing machine and I are practically inseparable. But when a project calls for a no-sew touch, my go-to is my trusty hot glue gun. So today, we're going to get into a sticky situation with this fabulous crafting companion. Our special guests today are from Surebonder, and they're here to melt down the facts on why hot glue is a must-have in your craft arsenal. We'll explore its evolution. We'll get a grip on how it works. <laughs> but before we dive into that, let me share a little story with you. A few years ago, I worked hosting a show in England. It was called Create and Craft. And one of our regular guests, her name was Louise, was famous for her unique approach to paper crafting. So unlike the rest of us who would use tape, she would grab her hot glue gun. I mean, she was all about the glue gun. It was basically an extension of her arm. So we gave her the nickname Hot Glue Lou. And she actually loved the nickname. But here's the funny part. One day during a live segment, Louise was in the middle of like this massive glue intensive paper craft. And I said jokingly, Louise, I'm surprised you have any fingerprints left with all the hot glue that you used. And without a beat, she put her hand up in the air and she goes, you mean these? This is just relics of my life before I started crafting. And you know what? I'm close to being a super spy by now. Everybody laughed and we all knew that Hot Glue Lou was not just a nickname, it was a way of life. And it should be your way of life too. We're going to talk about it right now with my guests, Brad Caymans and Stephanie Daniel from Surebonder. So how many times have you guys heard about this Hot Glue and fingerprint thing? More times than you can count. Are you tired of it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, There's still a little left. Hot Glue Lou was not. She loved she loved her nickname, and uh, we loved making fun of it. Now, this is going to be a glue-tastic show, Stephanie and Brad, so thank you for being here. Before we get into how to use hot glue and why we should use hot glue, tell me a little bit, give me a history lesson about hot glue and Surebonder. I guess starting with Surebonder, my grandpa started the company back in 1968 out of one-car garage locally to Chicago and Prospect Heights. Uh, we moved a couple times between Wheeling, Palatine, Buffalo Grove. We're currently in Wakanda right now. Uh, we started selling eyelets and rivets. Somehow we got into glue, uh, started manufacturing it in the 90s, and we're pretty much one of the last domestic manufacturers in the U.S., and uh, that's something that we're super proud of. And we have a plethora of different formulas, over 25 unique formulas that we sell to the crafting industry, the hardware industry, and also into the industrial packaging industry as well. That's amazing. Your grandfather started the business. That's so cool. So you like have always just been in the biz and kind of sort of around it. Always. Yep. Yeah, since, since the beginning. So can you tell us a little bit about the technology behind hot glue? Like when your grandfather started it, was it different at all? Like how did that happen? Or had he heard of it or used it? Yeah, so back then it was primarily just like a general purpose or something to, to close a corrugated box. I believe the first order was for Zenith Electronics, oh. and he was a stocking distributor. He brought in two cases, one for them and one to keep on the shelf. And then from there, it's pretty much been history. Innovations in hot melt have really come a long way since uh, the beginning. Uh, I mean, back in the day, even with the technology of the glue guns, it was a thumb-fed glue gun where you would push the stick through the melt chamber to get the glue out. Obviously now there's triggers and now we're moving into motorized guns where you squeeze the trigger and a motor feeds the glue stick automatically in some of our industrial models and on our craft models as well. When, when it comes to the glue, we have high strengths, we have different application, we have glow, glitter, uh, ultra low temperature that's safe for kids. Uh, there's a lot of different technology out there, different raw materials that have helped us develop a lot of different formulas that quite frankly are way above and beyond what they were back in the 60s. It's interesting too, because I feel like I'm still living in the 60s with my glue gun, not now, because I have my Surebonder, but 
pushing that glue, pushing the glue through. How important is it to have, I talked about this, to have the right tool to get the job done because there are so many different applications for hot glue these days. But you guys at Sherbonder have really made some significant innovations that were introduced to the market for crafters. So talk about having the right tool. When it comes to the right project and the right gun and the right glue, on the glue gun side, I mean, we have our full size or mini size most people are probably most familiar with. We've introduced uh, automatic shutoff technology where after 30 minutes, if the gun uh, hasn't been used, that it'll shut off automatically, kind of like a a hair curler or something like that, just for safety reasons. We include safety fuses on all of our guns. We have dual temperatures, different wattages, just anything from a detail tip. If you want to get into a real nice fine place and be delicate with your glue application, there's detail tips. Uh, if you want to do a large scale project, we have different tips for different you know application widths and wattage guns for uh, higher output for those bigger projects, even getting into more like construction style. I'm fascinated. I just, uh, I love it. And you know, Creative Living is based in Chicago. So I'm super happy that you guys are right out here in the neighborhood coming up with all these great innovations. So Fanny, tell us what you do for the company because I know it's very important. I, are you family too? Uh, no, I'm not, um, but I have been working <laughs> kind of like for family, the company. Right? Yeah, kind of. I've been working <laughs> for the company for quite a while now. So um, I do a lot of their graphic design, packaging, photography, and help out wherever I can. Do you use hot glue? Oh yeah. <laughs> I actually used uh, all of their products um, without even knowing who they were or what they were about before I joined. I was like a huge crafter. Uh, my mom and I, we make a lot of wreaths. We do a whole bunch of stuff. Like we used to do just things for holiday in general and then for fun and kind of call myself a little bit of a crafter and not a maker like yourself, but I do enjoy. And so using their products and then you know, seeing that they had a job opening, it was pretty cool. Back in the day, we would find job openings, we would look in the paper and we would circle the ones that we thought were the best. This would be one that you circled with a big black Sharpie marker because you're like, yes, that's where I want to work. I feel you on that. I feel you. And by Definitely. the way, if you're, you're a crafter, you're also a maker. Everyone I think is a maker. Even if you don't think you're creative, you can make something because you get that sense of satisfaction that you made it yourself. And I always say this, because I like to sew, because I grew up sewing, but I also grew up using hot glue. Like I love my hot glue. I say to people, make this. If you can't sew it, pin it. You can't pin it, staple it. You don't want to staple it. Go to the seamstress down the street and have her help you. If you don't want to do any of that, grab your hot glue and glue it because that is always going to work for you. So with all of that being said, Stephanie, what are some cool applications and a variety of ways that we can use our hot glue these days? There's a lot of different applications and, you know, kind of playing off what you just said, like, honestly, anyone can make anything That's very well said. Um, even if you feel like you're not the most creative person, I think a glue gun can definitely propel you into that. And we have a lot of different types of glue guns, like from Detail Tip, which is personally probably one of my favorites. And you can really do a lot with that from like paper crafting and all sorts of paper crafting. So my mom and I, we usually use it for like scrapbooking things or card making. Uh, it's kind of interesting to use it in that way, but you can add a lot of embellishments with it. Um, and putting things together like that. Plus it's fast drying. So it makes those crafts that may take a little bit longer of time to put together really fast and easy and quick. So your imagination can take you so many different places with all the different applications that could be out there. Um, we have like different um, application specific glues as Brad had mentioned. So we have one for wood. If you're working with a wood project, we have jewelry stick, we have fabric stick, we have um, a specialty like low stringing skillet glue as well, which is a, a lot of favorites with the floral industry for making wreaths and door hangers. There's just so many different types of things out there. So pretty much like whatever you're into, we either have a specialty glue to help you with that or again, our clear all-purpose glue is very, very strong as well, just using our all-purpose glue. So that can make you, you know, do any kind of craft that's out there. When I learned that Sherbonder had fabric glue 
and you have jewelry glue and you have glitter glue and color glue. So it's a whole different world from, even when I was talking about the story of working in England at Create and Craft, the glue we were using was your basic clear stick. And we would have to get specialty glue if I wanted to do something with fabric or I wanted to, you know, glue jewels down. I do a lot of jewelry crafts, like costume jewelry crafts that you can just rip them apart and then put them back together. I put them on shoes. I put them on wall art. I'm putting jewelry on shells, you know, to create necklaces. So is this jewelry glue something that we can use on all of these other surfaces? And, and why does it work? It's an acrylic based adhesive. So it sticks really well to non-porous materials like jewelry, all different kinds, you know, rocks, stones, plastic ones, anything under the sun um, that th isn't necessarily porous. The acrylic feature of that glue is what gives it its intense strength and helps with the bond quality. Is there a curing time for that or because like hot glue, it just when it cools, it's dry? Yes. So usually for that glue, it takes about 45 seconds to about a minute before it's pretty much done heating. Uh, done cooling and it's it's hard ready to go and it's not going to go anywhere. I'm so freaking excited about jewelry glue. I don't think you guys understand because it dries quick and and that's one of the reasons too why everybody loves hot glue. And Stephanie, mm -hmm. you had mentioned it. Your your paper crafting with your mom and making cards and of course hot glue Lou was doing that when everybody else was using tape is the glue come out you know sometimes hot glue can be a little bit thick but if we're putting it on paper we don't want it to be bubbly talk about how to make that smooth and have it lay flat yeah great question that is definitely something i think that our detail tip glue guns really help with but it is a little bit i would say it takes a little bit of finessing to get it just right um, especially when you're dealing with like card making scrapbooking where you're dealing with the thinner papers so one of the things with the detail tip glue gun like i mentioned is one of my favorites um, i use it all the time um, is that you have the perfect control you have precision at your fingertips right there so with our detail tip it's a very very fine tip that's on there like nothing else that's out there on the market and it really does put the control back in your hands i think that right there is a key to working with paper with hot melt glue and then also to like it's it's all about the trigger control. So like I said, it's a little bit of finessing that you have to kind of do in there. So it's a little bit of um, a learning curve, I would say. Uh, but you can lay a very, very thin bead down with our detail tips. And that really does help a lot to give you that finer, not bubbly, if you will, kind of effect. I always say more is more and less is a bore. Like that is my motto. That is my trademark. That's what I say to everyone. If you asked anybody, that I've ever um, hosted a show with or has seen me hosting a show, I always say more is more and less is a war, which means if you were thinking about buying one by two, if you think that you have too much stuff in your basement, leave it there. Some, you know, you might need it someday. So more is more and less is a war. But in this case, when we're talking about adding glue with a fine tip, or we're we're adding a little bit of fabric glue. So a little bit less, or is it soak it so it gets in there? Like a lot of times we want to make a little nest so it can stick in there. Is it more is more and less is a bore? Or is it really be mindful of how much glue you're putting on what project you're doing? My experience with it anyways, using it, is that if you're going to be doing something um, like fine, like really small, like you're adding just one bead at a time, um, you're and you don't want the, everybody knows about the hot glue schmoosh, right? It comes out kind of thing. And you're trying to avoid that usually. Yeah. Um, so you can actually use a little bit less glue. If you've got a fabric glue stick and you've got a glitter glue stick and you've got your clear glue stick and you just have one gun, again, more is more and less is a bore, buy two guns, buy three guns. You gotta have one gun for every single one of the glues that you have, have a dedicated glue gun. This is me talking as a crafter, as somebody who wants to sit in my craft cellar and just make things all day long, I wish that was what I did, but um, I would love to have three. Wh what is your thought on that? Can we use one and, and kind of cycle the glue through and how does that work? Well, 
if I get jewelry glue on my uh, my fabric glue, it, it's kind of like a Reese's. Is it going to be bad? So just with any kind of experience with different types of hot glue, because that's another thing too. A lot of crafters, a lot of people that are doing it kind of on the everyday or as a hobby, you are tending to use just a standard glue stick, right? So you're pretty used to just using your clear sticks and that's kind of your go-to. But now when you're introducing specialty glues in the mix of things, um, if you don't have multiple glue guns, which of course, yes, it is a great suggestion just because, and I know a lot of people that do do that. Um, they have their one dedicated glue gun just for fabric or just for jewelry or, you know, whatever your specialty glue that you're using is. Um, but if you don't, I would definitely recommend taking a uh, clear stick and then running the glue stick all the way through of your specialty. Let's say you have the fabric stick in there and you just did a fabric project. Now you're going to switch gears and you're going to go to a whole new project and do a jewelry stick like you had mentioned. You know, make sure you're going to feed that glue stick, the fabric glue, all the way through. And then you're going to want to take a clear stick, maybe even two of them, and you're going to want to keep feeding it through the glue gun until you don't see any more of the fabric stick, which is a cream color. Um, it also is available in a black color as well, too. But you're going to want to make sure you see no other color coming out of there. And then you can go ahead and swap out your specialty stick. It's a little bit of, you know, again, kind of playing around with it. But that's something that we do recommend uh, is definitely feeding the glue stick all the way through before mm -hmm. you start another one. Yeah, see, I don't want to waste my glue stick, so I'm probably just going to have to get a couple more glue guns. So let's talk about fabric gluing. And we, we talked about it a little bit. So in my little head, I like to make pillows. I like to make everything. But I'm thinking of a fleece pillow. They do a lot of no sew fleece where you tie them and then you give the pillow out. So I'm thinking like, okay, if I have a fleece fabric and I'm going to cut this into a 14 inch pillow and I add, you know, cut some fringe and add that to it as well, stuff the pillow in it and then glue the edges. Does the no nozzle need to be bigger if we're doing something that massive and trying to create sort of like a thicker seam just because simply it, it is glue and it's not a stitch that goes in between or is it going to hold it and that's going to be just fine to give away as a gift and, and feel comfortable that it's not going to break? Uh, great question, honestly. I think it really does depend on the different material that you're going to be using. So, I mean, I'm not a seamstress at all. I use my glue for sure with any kind of sew projects. So I would definitely recommend though with the fabric glue, it is also again formulated to be super strong bond that when you're using like a detail tip or something like that, you can use that fine glue bead and it should hold just fine. I think you should be totally comfortable with that. But again, with their detail tip, even though uh, you have that fine bead, you can pump out a lot of glue using it as well too. So as long as you keep continuously pulling the trigger, you can decide on, on your own as it's coming out, do you want it to be thicker or do you want it to be remain small and skinny? as well. You know, and we do have a full size version of that glue gun as well, uh, which does feature a little bit larger of a tip if you did want to have a larger line of glue for that type of project. I want to talk a little bit about the glue pot. So explain what that is. I probably said the name wrong. So let's talk about it. What's a glue pot? Uh, well, we call it the glue skillet. It's skillet. Um, I love yeah. skillet. <laughs> yeah, we love that. Our model that we advertise a lot is our adjustable temperature. So you can either adjust the temperature up to a high or low or somewhere in between, depending on what you're working with. If it's more of a delicate material, you can turn the heat down a little bit. Uh, and it also works with our low stringing glue skillet pellets that we formulated as well. Yeah, I want to hear more about low string and I want to hear about what, how is that different? What, what does that mean, Brad? What do you mean? <laughs> so if, I mean, anyone that's used a glue gun, you know that when you're gluing something and you back the gun away, there's a string that forms. So pretty much hot glue is, it's a plastic based material. So it's like a molten plastic. So there's that stringing. Quick tip with the glue gun, switching gears from the skillet. If you want to cut that stringing with a glue gun, circle your tip to where the heat of the tip cuts that stringing. Just a, as a- oh, uh, I love that. 
a cheat to, to bypass that. But in terms of the glue skillet, that is pretty much designed for bringing the materials that you're using in your craft, dipping them into the glue to get a better surface area instead of taking a glue gun and trying to hit all the surface area individually. Dip it in the hot glue skillet, the glue will attach to the product, and then you put it on your project. When you're doing that transition, stringing can be an issue. So the formula for the glue skillet has different components in it that help reduce that stringing so that you're not fighting that constantly while you're doing your project. So another tip would be just to like turn it to kind of like get the, the bead to spin a little bit and then it should break. I love a good top tip, Brad. I don't know, but you're bringing it right now. This is good. <laughs> this is what happens when it's a family business. You know all the tips and tricks. I'm sure when you were a little kid, everybody went to like first grade with their little, you know, little white bottle of glue name we all know and then brad comes walking in with like a hot glue stick everyone's like what <laughs> right. i was the cool kid of course you were so <laughs> the the glue skillet is meant for a dip and stick a dip and stick for people that don't know what that means explain it sure yeah i mean that's exactly what our catchphrase is for this product is just dip and stick so you're just going to literally, actually, let me back up a little bit. So when using the skillet, the neat thing about this is that you're literally, it's all contained within the skillet. So you'll have your skillet, you'll go ahead and turn that on, let it heat up, and you'll be able to pour the skillet pellets, the glue pellets into the skillet. And then um, the pellets will melt down and it'll be molten glue. And you'll be able to dip those materials, whatever it is, being a pine cone or different floral faux flowers, things like that, dipping that straight into the glue and then being able to stick that directly onto your wreath or whatever project that you decided to make. So it just cuts down um, some of the cumbersomeness of using a glue gun for those specific types of projects. You want to kind of just dip it and then stick it right away onto the project. Um, it just makes for a fast and a little bit easier way when you're doing such a large scale project, like a big wreath or a door hanger, things like that. The floral industry really loves these. Yeah, that's cool because I feel like the glue skillet is sort of a new innovation. It's really the first time I've seen it. And I'm like, who is using these? But I guess if you're, you're always dipping and sticking, just having it right there and having your hands free, free just to create, not necessarily grabbing that glue gun. So Brad, thank your family for that cool innovation. <laughs> Let, <laughs> let's talk about innovations, Brad. We've got the stir sticks. I have the stir sticks and I thought, oh, these look like chopsticks for glue sticking. There's no glue to them. I'm guessing they repel the hot glue, like nothing sticks to them. Explain to us how somebody would use a stir stick and what it is. Sure. So we we brought on the stir sticks to pretty much assist with being able to stir the glue. Sometimes after being on for a couple hours, things, things can get stagnant. You got to give it a little bit of a stir. The sticks are actually made out of Teflon. So that repels the adhesion of the skillet glue. So at the end of the project, you're able to peel that glue right off and then keep your sticks clean. Another way that you can use these is, let's say you wanna do something a little more fine, you don't have your glue gun with you. You can dip the stir stick into the molten glue in the skillet, accumulate a little bit of that, take it over and dip it, or at least touch up or put glue on smaller portions of your project. So it gives you that control and versatility you know, sometimes you want to dunk something in there and sometimes you just need a little bit. I mean, seriously, it's about time somebody came up with that. I love the Teflon stir stick. And then if you find, oh, I'm never using them, you can use them for oversized chopsticks. No, I'm kidding. I tease. I tease. I, I made jokes about having no fingerprints and becoming a super spy because you have no fingerprints left or you have glue ridges instead of fingerprints. All fun and games, people. I know this. And I talked about Brad going to second grade with the glue gun instead of regular old white glue that doesn't dry immediately. Talk about safety. It, it, it hurts if you get a little dab of glue. We all try not to do that. Sometimes it gets stuck on your nice manicure, but you know, that's part of the game. If you end up getting it on you, best way to get it off is to roll it off. And then what about kids use? So in terms of kids use, um, we do have an ultra low temperature. Uh, we call it our cool shot glue. And that melting point of that glue is significantly lower than that of a standard glue. As a perspective, like a high temp glue would be about 380 degrees. A low temp would be about 250. 
your ultra low temp is going to be sitting around that 180 to 200 degree Fahrenheit range. So still hot, but to the touch, it's not nearly as hot as what it would be if it was coming out of a high temp glue gun. So typically, if you find yourself in the situation where you do get glue on your skin, we recommend put it under cold water immediately if available or try to thin out the glue on whatever's around you. The thicker the glue, the more heat that is retained in that glue. So thin it out, put it under cold water, peel it off. More than likely you're gonna be okay. If you work with curling iron, stuff like that, it, it can be very hot as well, <laughs> but the glue sticks to you, so. Yeah, uh, that's funny. Uh, it, it, curling irons, hello, we know that. I love the idea that we can actually um, have the lower heat for the kids. Any insider tips and tricks for getting the best results? Yeah, well, one that comes to mind is that when we all kind of know that, you know, the hot glue, right, it sticks together and it kind of forms an instant bond and it dries quickly. But I think what really happens um, in the magic of it is the actual bond comes when it's cooled. So when it's hot, that's the perfect time immediately to stick two surfaces together, right? And then you're going to want to hold it together firmly for 15 to 30 seconds. And then as it's cooling, the glue cools, that's when that bond actually forms and is solidified then. So I think that's kind of something that, you know, as a lot of people know, but really knowing kind of how that works and knowing that to hold it a little bit longer sometimes than you should uh, can really help with the bonding process. I guess I will add one more thing when it comes to the glue guns, just as an educational piece. So you have your mini and your full size. Full size, you want more volume. Mini, you want to be more delicate. You don't really need as much volume. Then you get into temperatures, high temp, low temp. Typically with hot glue, the hotter the temperature, the better the bond. So if you're doing wood or plastics or hard to bond to materials, you want to have a high temp glue gun to get the best adhesion out of the glue that you're using. And then it comes to the power of the glue gun. So we advertise this and everyone does in terms of wattage. So the higher the wattage, the more glue output you get per time period. So like a mini glue gun is like a 10 to 20 watt. We have thousand watt glue guns. If you're doing packaging all day, typically in the craft arena, you'll see like a 40 or a 60 or an 80 or maybe even a hundred watt glue gun. So it really depends on the application that you're doing, how much glue output you're looking to, to get uh, for your project. So those are just some glue gun shopping tips as you're cruising through the stores. And Stephanie, did you want to add something? Uh, yeah, along just along with the, you know, the amount that you're using kind of uh, too is as you're using it and you're using the glue gun a lot, let's say, and you're using a mini glue gun, let's just, we'll give out an example, right? And as you're crafting, um, you may be using a lot of glue for this particular craft. Well, when that trigger becomes a little bit harder to pull, that's when you know you're going to want to stop. We find that that's kind of something, too, that is always good to touch on. You never want to force the trigger to be pulled. And that kind of touches on the wattage, which Brad was mentioning. There is a catch-up time right? There is, you know, there's only so much melted glue within the chamber of the glue gun. So when you've used it all and it hasn't had that time to catch up, it will become harder to pull that trigger. And in that time, you have to wait a little bit longer until that glue gun is ready to be used again. And it's not a long time, especially if you've been crafting quite a long time, you know that, but it's one of those things too that we kind of forget. And maybe even it might be a time where you want to think about upgrading your glue gun instead of a mini size into a full size because you might be just having such a bigger project that a full size would definitely aid you better than using a mini size glue gun. Let's review the products that we have and that we can use and that we should all buy to have in our crafty stash. And I'm really interested in talking a little bit more about how the, the glue gun sets on the holder because if you're anything like me, your glue gun just has two little prongs that leans on it and it flips over all the time. But you guys have come up with a really cool innovation where it sits on the holder, it charges when it's on there, and then you can flip, put it back on there to continue charging. So let's let's start with the glue guns and then we'll make our way finally through the glue stick. So we came out with the mini cordless gun um, and it also has a, a fine tip as well. 
So the benefit of the cordless feature is everyone kind of knows when you're you're plugged into an outlet or you have an extension cord and you have to drag the cord over your project to glue whatever you're gluing. Uh, with the cordless feature, you don't have that problem anymore. So you keep your cord and your stand plugged into the wall or extension cord that you're using, and that stays on the table. The glue gun actually, it essentially, it doesn't, there's no battery to it, so it's not really a charge or uncharge. It's essentially plugging it in versus unplugging it. So you'll take it off the stand, you're essentially unplugging the glue gun. You take it over to wherever you're working uh, to do your gluing, and technically it's just turned off but that heat stays for about one to three minutes depending on how much glue output you're doing in that time period um so when you take it back to the stand plug it back in on the stand it's like plugging the gun back in or flipping the switch to on and it's starting to reheat itself again so it gives you that flexibility so you're not dealing with the cord and it also gives you the freedom to just go wherever you want or glue wherever you want Stephanie, let's talk about the fabric glue a little bit more. It's one of our best selling specialty glues, I would say. It's available in cream and black. Uh, so depending on what kind of fabric you're working with, could be like lighter colors, you're gonna wanna use the cream. If you're working with darker colors, use the black. But then also one of the cool things about it, you can throw it in the washing machine. Now we're gonna preface, you're gonna wanna use it on the cool, gentle cycle. Right. <laughs> Right. It is hot glue, so you're definitely not sticking that in the dryer. You're going to want to hang dry that. But how cool is that? You I can mean, actually throw it in okay. the washer. Yeah. I mean, it just makes a really neat. Uh, yeah. It just it's, makes it's an alternative. It incredible. To, if, you, you, if you can, if you're, hand, if you're hand stitching something or if you can sew or if you can't sew. I mean, this is a great way to be able to use a different material when you're crafting materials in addition to your paper, in addition to... And, you know, your other surfaces that you're using. So I think that's really great. I'm super excited about it. It tends not to seep into the fabric weaves either. Um, it rather just grabs a hold of it. And then that's pretty much what is a little bit of a secret about that glue in particular is that a lot of times if you have used hot glue, just a regular all purpose hot glue before with fabric, it'll seep in between. And that's kind of why a lot of people don't prefer to use it. But with this specialty fabric glue, it kind of takes that away. Any other innovations in uh, hot glue technology you have coming that we should be excited for, Brad? So I mentioned it or briefly at the beginning that the motorized glue guns are becoming more popular and we just came out with a retail slash craft version uh, in the mini size. So like I said, you squeeze that trigger, it turns the motor in the gun and it feeds the glue stick automatically, which gives you a consistent bead and reduces hand fatigue. Um, so that's something that's new to us. We're also coming out with some higher wattage cordless glue guns as well. Just giving you that freedom because everything's going battery lately and it's it's a very popular new new feature for most things. So we're incorporating that into our glue guns. We also have guns that have built-in batteries as well. So you don't have to go out and buy a hundred dollar battery at a hardware store or whatever that may be. Versatility is a big thing and uh, glue strength as well. So in Ooh. terms of different glue formulas, you know, the, the misconception with hot glue is it, it's like a, a temporary bond. It's not that strong. Well, we have, like I said, over 25 different formulas. We have really strong glues out there that could even be used in the construction world. They can be excellent bonds in the crafting world as well to, to where you're not questioning whether it's going to stick if it's a gift, if you're handing it to someone. Um, so we, the, the technology is out there. There's all sorts of different glues. And we're just trying to educate people on you know what, what's out there, what's available. I think that's great. That's why we're here today, friends. All right. So... I do believe that hot glue and the glue skillet and several glue guns are absolute necessities in your crafting arsenal. But if people want to learn more about the fascinating story behind Surebonder, or they just want to find the product, pick the one that's right for them. Stephanie, where can people find you? Um, well, we're in most uh, retail craft stores like Joanne, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, um, things like that. Walmart, we're in um, a bunch of different hardware stores too, like Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, but you can also find us on surebonder.com and Amazon and pretty much wherever you uh, purchase your supplies for crafting. 
um, or DIY projects, you'll be able to find Sherbonder there. Just choose the black and green. Choose the black yep. and green. I like it. And then any social media handles we should be following. Uh, yeah, all of them are just at Sherbonder. At Sherbonder, that's perfect. Okay, so choose the black and green. I'm so excited. And I love the jewelry glue too. All right, you guys, this has been really fun, except that now I need mm -hmm. to go make stuff. Stephanie and Brad, thank you so much for all of that great information about hot glue and Sherbonder. And thank you for joining us on Creative Living. Live better creatively. For more inspiration, visit janeklaus.com. Thank you for listening.